So it is not on us to use our logic and try to you know explain a way or to allow for praying in another way other than the Prophet ﷺ prayed. This is the logic of Satan. This is satanic logic. We have divine logic. We have satanic logic. This is satanic logic. When we have a clear text from the Prophet ﷺ in which he said pray as you saw me pray. To do otherwise is disobedience. Is rejection of the Prophet ﷺ. That's what it is. What else, how else can we say? There is no logical argument which can be used to justify praying in a way other than the Prophet ﷺ prayed if we know that is the case. Of course, if you don't know, that's another situation. You don't have the knowledge, you did it based on what you knew, that's another situation. Allah judges that situation as He wishes. But where the knowledge is accessible, because simply because you didn't know doesn't mean you're excused. If you didn't know and you were able to know and you chose not to know, then you're not excused. The person who is excused for doing something wrongly because he or she didn't know is the one who had no access to that knowledge. They had no means to gain that knowledge. So Allah is Ghafur Rahim. He's most merciful and He forgives. But as for the one who has the opportunity, then that is another situation altogether. There's no excuse before the law in that sense. So, when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, on one occasion in the masjid, companions are there in the masjid, they saw him stand up and walk up the member. Walk up the steps of the member and stood on the top with his back to them. And he raised his hands and began to pray. They were naturally amazed. What is the Prophet Sallallahu doing? He had never done that before. And they could all see that a problem was going to come. When the time for sujood came, how is he going to do it? So they were all watching. They <laughs> were watching to see what he was going to do. And he made takbir, bowed, stood back up again. And then he walked backwards down the mimbar. And backwards away from the base of the mimbar and made sujood. He sat up, prostrated, sat back up, stood up, and walked back up the member again. And he repeated the same thing. When he was finished, he turned to his companions. And of course, they're all waiting for an explanation. This is something he had never done before. What was this? He said, I only did that in order for you to learn the way that I make my prayer. So is it important for us to know how he prayed? Yes. Why go through all of that? If it isn't really important, why go through all of that? It means that the Prophet وسلم, was engaged in futile acts if it's not important. So, <clears throat> Prophet Muhammad وسلم, prayed in a particular way. 
And as Muslims, it is our duty, our obligation to learn the way that he prayed. The khutbah period that we have here is not enough for me to go through each and every point. But suffice to say, I will mention a few common errors, common mistakes that we should be aware of with regards to this most fundamental aspect of our worship. And what I will try to do is to cover some of the variations that people do at the same time. Now the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ did when he stood up in some cultures people are taught that when you stand up you keep your feet together you keep your feet together well we know that the Prophet ﷺ had told people when they lined up to pray behind him put your shoulders to your shoulders and your feet to your feet when you stand next to the person praying next to you your shoulders should be in contact with his shoulder or her shoulder and your feet should be in contact with their feet heels or at least feet can you put your feet in contact with the person on your right and on your left and be together no not possible so that instruction which is authentically recorded establishes the fact that when standing for prayer feet are not together but apart around shoulders width apart the Prophet ﷺ raised his hand while making takbir while saying Allahu Akbar he raised both of his hands now there are further descriptions that when he raised his hands he raised them with the palms facing towards the Qibla palms towards the Qibla and that they were at the level of his shoulders or the level of his ears that is what is authentically recorded so it means that for those of us that begin the prayers like this 